De George syndrome is a genetic disorder that is usually caused by a large deletion on the 22nd chromosome. Inside this deletion resides the TBOX1 gene, which codes for the developmental protein TBOX1. There are also a few known point mutations located directly on the TBOX1 gene that can result in symptoms of DeGeorge syndrome. One such mutation is the G310S mutation, which changes a glycine to a serine at the 310th amino acid on the gene. It is further known that there is an exact base pair mutation of a guanine to adenine at the 928th base pair. This specific point mutation is the one that we studied. This particular mutation is rare. In a 2003 study of 235 patients with clinically diagnosed DeGeorge syndrome, only 13 cases were the result of the G to A substitution. It is believed that DeGeorge syndrome is a result of improper migration of cardiac neural crest cells into the pharyngeal arches, and with this specific mutation, it is hypothesized that it causes issues with DNA binding and protein stabilization. Patients are usually diagnosed when they are born with severe symptoms. In one publication, 60% of the DeGeorge syndrome patients had severe congenital heart disease within the 48 hours prior to being born. DeGeorge syndrome patients that survive their debilitating symptoms commonly have visual and auditory defects and learning disabilities. In order to gain a better understanding of DeGeorge syndrome and the sociological implications of these specific symptoms of DeGeorge syndrome, a do-it-yourself plan was devised to investigate their effects on learning. The team designed a test to be used in coordination with a Khan Academy video about medieval and Byzantine art. This video was chosen because we thought it unlikely that participants would have advanced background knowledge in the subject. In this way, results aren't skewed by subjects' prior knowledge. We tested four different conditions. The control condition consisted of participants watching the video all the way through without any impairments and subsequently taking the test. This was chosen as the control because participants' learning is not disrupted in any way. The next condition consisted of participants watching the video while wearing noise-canceling headphones. This group was considered the auditory impaired group. With this group, we can analyze how having an auditory impairment affects learning. The third condition was participants watching the video in a dark room with sunglasses on to mimic visual impairments. In this way, we can analyze the effects of visual impairments on learning. The last condition entails participants answering the questions without viewing the video to mirror how DeGeorge syndrome patients with cognitive disabilities struggle to learn without assistance. With this group, we can analyze how lack of ability to retain information affects academic success. To further analyze the specific effects on learning, we compared all of the data from the test to see if the results were significantly different. On the post-test, participants were asked not to guess the answer if they did not know in order to eliminate skewed data, such as false positive correct answers. In order to compare data, an ANOVA test was run, and p-values comparing each group to one another were found. A p-value less than .05 is significant, meaning that the data is not just different due to chance. The p-value for the one-way ANOVA was found to be less than .0001. All of the conditions mean number of correct answers individually compared to one another resulted in a p-value less than .01, except for the mean of the control group and the mean of the vision impaired group. The p-value for this comparison was not significant. The general trend found after analyzing the data was that participants with mimicked visual and auditory defects had a significantly lower amount of correct answers. The control group had the highest mean of correct responses, vision impaired participants scored the second highest, auditory impaired participants scored the third highest, and participants who didn't view the video at all left a lot of questions unmarked and scored the lowest. We conducted this sociological study in the hopes of spreading awareness about the difficulties of learning and succeeding in a school setting with the impairments brought on by DeGeorge syndrome. By testing others, we were able to see the effects of such impairments in action and gain a better appreciation for the struggles that DeGeorge syndrome patients endure on a daily basis.